Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 25th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is National Banana Split Day, Day of Song Gong, Kiss and Makeup Day, National Burger Day, National Park Service Founders Day, and National Secondhand Wardrobe Day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our reading for today comes from Genesis chapter 11, verse, starting with verse 10. Listen for God's word to speak to you. These are the descendants of Shem. When Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of Arpachshad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after the birth of Archibshad five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Archibshad had lived thirty-five years, he became the father of Shelah. And Archibshad lived after the birth of Shelah four hundred three years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived thirty years, he became the father of Eber. And Shelah lived after the birth of Eber four hundred three years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg, and Eber lived after the birth of Peleg 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he became the father of Riu, and Peleg lived after the birth of Riu 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Riu had lived 32 years, he became the father of Serug, and Liu lived after the birth of Sirug 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sirug had lived 30 years, he became the father of Nahor. And Sirug lived after the birth of Nahor 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah. And Nahor lived after the birth of Terah 119 years and had other sons and daughters. When Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the descendants of Terah. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his birth in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Iscah. Now, Sarai was barren. She had no children. No child. Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to to go to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, today we are beginning the next movement of the book of Genesis. It begins with a um, a list of descendants, a genealogy. You are familiar with these. There's not anything particularly interesting um, in this one. That we don't have any side stories. Though something to note is people are starting to have children at a much earlier age. Um, in their 30s, around, you know, not too far from when we see people having children now. They are continuing to live a much longer time. And you might ask, okay, well, I thought they were supposed to only live 120 years. Um, There are some who suggest that 120 years before the flood was actually a countdown to the flood, which the the math works out relatively well. Um, So that that may be an answer to that. Again, these are probably slightly inflated numbers, but people uh, continue to live and there are more and more of them, etc. And, you know, if you're looking for a name for a child, there's some great ones in here because Archibshad, I think, would be a, a great child's name. But now we are introduced to this particular family, uh, the descendants of Terah. 
So Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, three sons. This is a familiar thing that we have heard before. Usually uh, people are, sons were listed in birth order. So Abram would be the firstborn, Nahor second, and Haran the third. Haran is the father of Lot, and Haran dies. They come from a place called Ur with Chaldeans, which sounds like a funny name to us. But in the ancient world, Ur, this was a major, major center for culture, for technology. So you may remember me talking about Gilgamesh. Uh, Gilgamesh, the, probably the, if, if there was an indeed a historical person, Gilgamesh, um, but also in the stories, they were the king, uh, the god king of Ur, the city of Ur. This is a major early civilization, ancient civilization in the Mesopotamian area. So they live in that area. They come from those people. They come from the Chaldeans. They come from um, this, this land, this Ur, uh, which will eventually will become um, Babylon, right? It will eventually become those peoples. Abram uh, and Nahor take wives. Abram's wife is Sarai, and Nahor's wife is Milcah. Um, Milcah had, uh, she was the daughter of Haran and the father of Milcah and Iska. so there's some sort of interesting familial stuff going on there. And we are told about Sarai, that she is barren. She has no children. That w is a pretty major plot point, but just to sit with the discomfort here in the ancient world, a woman who was unable to bear children, was not seen as very valuable at all. Um, and yet she is very much seen as valuable. In fact, she has a name. This is pretty significant. Um, if we think up to this point, all of the named women in the book of Genesis are Eve, uh, the two wives of Lemech, um, whose names are escaping me, and now, unless I'm missing somebody, Sarai, right? There are not many women who are named. Noah's wife was always Noah's wife. It's, we never get her name. We don't get the names of, of the son's, uh, son's wives, right? But Sarai is named. So it's this interesting sort of juxtaposition where culturally she would not be valued, and yet she is valued. Um, she does have a name. In this story, there's, there's something that tells us that there's something important, right? Now, Tara takes Abram and Lot and daughter-in-law Sarai and sons, uh, his sons, Abram's wife, and they went, they go from Ur of the Chaldeans, and they are headed towards where? Canaan. They are headed towards the Holy Land. They are headed west to, from this sort of great, um, uh, you know, center of culture and, and technology and all of these sorts of things for the ancient world to the wild west. But they are drawn there for some reason. What is it? You know, the Mishnah, there's, there's, there are some who have suggested that, that, Tara also hears this call from God that eventually is truly taken up by Abram. Um, but he starts headed that way. We also have sort of there's part of this is they're, they are moving west. It doesn't say that directly. But because they are moving away from the east, remember east is not a good direction. Narratively, thematically, they are going west. And so maybe there's, they're headed in the right direction. But they don't go all the way to Ur. They stop in Haran. Now, Haran was not at all like the, um, you know, the great magnificent city of Ur, but it also wasn't quite as wild as Canaan. And so it's this sort of middle place. And so Terra is able to get them away, but not all the way away. They become comfortable there in Haran. They are able to have a house and, and a building and, and, start to, to gain some wealth. 
um, these sorts of things. So that's that's interesting as well. That's instructional as well. So often we have great dreams for ourselves and our families, and sometimes we can't get all the way, but we get part of the way. We get them on the way. Um, Tara gets Abram on the way towards Tara's own goal and what eventually would be Abram's goal. He takes him a part of the way. So lots of things here that uh, this is the beginning. You also notice that the, the tone has kind of changed. Um, the tone is much more intimate. Uh, we're getting some some important sort of character notes and some different things. Um, the, the type of story is going to be different now. It is a true narrative. We are getting a lot of foreshadowing. We're getting a lot of, there, there are things that are put here very much on purpose. We're hearing about Ur. We're hearing about um, Canaan. We're hearing about um, Lot. We're, we're getting the backstory to Lot because Lot's going to be pretty important. We're, we're getting about Sarah, Sarai, excuse me, and her, the fact that she is barren. All of these sort of things are setting up for the story ahead. That sort of level of narrative uh, weaving is not something that we necessarily saw in Genesis 1 through 11. It was much more sort of like, oh, and then this happened. Um, this, this is a much sort of uh, more complex, more nuanced sort of writing style um, and, and story style. So here we have the beginning of this second movement of the book of Genesis, specifically looking at Abram and Sarai. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning. And we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. Those who teach and those who learn. The community of faith in your church. Reconciliation in our relationships. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the stories before us. Those who have brought us to the place that we are today. Those who have taken on generational sins. And dealt with traumas. Who have seen in the distance, the promised land, and brought us as far as they could. Help us to continue forward. Perhaps not getting where we are intending to go, but getting further for those who come after us. Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. Those who are lonely and forgotten. those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Fran, a friend of Beverly's, who, whose cancer has returned to her kidneys, as well as Fran's brother, who has stage 4 cancer. For Joseph, Lynn's grandfather, who's in the hospital. For the Sens family, who will be moving to Mississippi. We pray for Keith, the son-in-law of Dennis and Ernie. 
for Nick, who's recovering from shoulder surgery, for Van and Tony, who are both undergoing radiation treatment. Eternal God, you are the source of every gift and the fountain of all blessing. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to praising the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, so far as it depends on us, let us live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.